Greetings, everyone. I wanted to talk briefly about an update to the add-on mask tools, which is available on the Blender Market. And if you don't know what the add-on is, it allows you to blend sets of PBR textures together, either procedurally or by painting them. And it works as a layer system, allowing you to overlay these effects on your 3D models. If you're interested in learning more about mask tools, you can check out my YouTube channel, where there are videos which demonstrate how to get started with the add-on. But in this video, I'm just going to be discussing the new features in the update. The first of which is an option on the mask base node called mask blend. This allows you to use textures that have a range of grayscale value for the purpose of separating the PBR textures while also preserving the height information. And I can better explain this with a demonstration. So here I'm going to paint this metal set of PBR textures onto this set of PBR textures for the wood. And I'm using a sculpt brush, which has a lot of different range of value. Now I'm going to connect the mask bump to a bump node. And it's fairly obvious to see where these two sets of PBR textures are being blended together. We can see the wood cracks here along the edges of the screw. But now I can easily correct that by using the mask blend, which completely separates those two sets of PBR textures, again, while preserving all of that bump information. And this creates a lot of new possibilities for creating these very intricately detailed textures on your 3D models. In addition to the mask blend option, there are a few new things on the mask base node as well. Located at the very bottom of the node is a new input called alpha paint. If you create a new texture with the background color of black and plug it into that input, now you can use any of the custom brushes that Mask Tools comes with. And painting alpha certainly isn't anything that's new to Blender, but I felt as though it did belong on the mask base node just to make it a more complete texturing tool. Next, we have the options to create wet maps directly on our material. And there's a number of settings here, which I'll discuss in a moment. But first, you need to create a new texture with the background color of black and plug it into the wet map input. Now, all of this information is directed into the color and the roughness outputs on the mask base node. Here, I'm using the mask base node to separate this dirt texture from a cobblestone texture. And now, if I switch over to my wet map texture, I can start painting some puddles. And this will affect the color and the roughness of both the dirt and the cobblestone. Before I get into the settings for the wet map, I'm going to go ahead and apply the bump detail. So the mask bump will affect the dirt that I painted along those edges. And then there's also a wet map bump that will create some depth to the puddles. And speaking of depth, there's a wet map depth slider that determines how shallow or how deep that puddle appears. There's also this wet map normal value slider, which will determine how much of the normal maps for the PBR textures actually comes through. And finally, there's the option to invert the bump for that wet map. And finally, there's just a few improvements done to the blending options. Uh, with the addition of this option to blend the normal maps. That's it for this update. I think that Mask Tools is really coming along. It's turning into a pretty cool texturing tool. If you're interested in checking it out, I'll leave a link below for the Blender Market page. Thanks for watching.